Today I'm going to teach you how to identify and potentially avoid equipment failures like this collapsed teeter so that you can keep your dogs happy and safe on agility equipment for dogs. For dog agility training and tips that are always spot on. I'm Lisa Seltover, 20 year dog agility judge, trainer, and competitor. If you're interested in all things dog agility related, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below on the right and also click the bell so that you'll be notified when I post a new video every Tuesday. If you'd like to ensure your dog's safety on agility equipment everywhere but don't know what to look for, I've got you covered. By the end of this video, you'll have three powerful equipment checks that can be your go-to for your dog's safety on the equipment. As a dog agility judge, I've used this method on thousands of agility courses in competition, training classes, and on my own equipment at home. Now it's your turn. While the method I'm going to teach you is applicable to all agility equipment, the place where I've caught major and unexpected equipment failures before they happened are the contacts. By contacts, I mean the A-frame, teeter, and dog walk. When I visually inspect the dog agility equipment, I use a two-part method that covers what I call the stabilization and the connection areas. These are the two areas that are most prone to either breakdown or human error. The stabilization area is the support or the base of the obstacle, and the connection area is where the board meets the base. And by the way, I promise to show you pictures so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Using the contacts, let's jump right on into the two-part method and what to look for. When it comes to the A-frame, this is the stabilization area and this is the connection area. I start with the stabilization area and work my way up to the connection area at the top. Although I suspect that's because I'm on the shorter side of height. My husband prefers to work his way from the top connection point to the bottom stabilization area. Either way, it's your personal preference. In the stabilization area, you're going to want to visually inspect the support chains and the clip devices for these three things. First, that the support chains and clips are free from corrosion. Next, that the links and clips are fully closed and that they haven't been stretched due to wear and tear, metal fatigue, and age. Lastly, you wanna be sure that all the links are resting end to end. Be sure that there are no kinks in the chain or clips that could break loose and allow the obstacle to shift position when your dog is on it. Moving up to the connection area, you're gonna to wanna to check two things, the hinge, and the hinge pin. I'll talk more about the hinge pin later in the video. When visually inspecting the hinge, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's free of corrosion and grit. Second, be sure the hinge is securely attached to the A-frame board. I wanna caution you not to assume that just because the A-frame is up, everything must be fine. And here's why. This is a picture of my own A-frame where the hinge is no longer attached to the board on one side. When the A-frame was up, the problem was not immediately visible. It wasn't until we did an inspection, just like the one I'm sharing with you now, that we found a problem. Let's move to the teeter. Just like the A-frame, you'll work the teeter from the stabilization area up to that connection area. In the stabilization area, you'll perform the same checks on the chain and links. When it comes to the connection area, on the A-frame, teeter, and dog walk, you'll wanna check two things the rod and the rod connection. First, you'll want to ensure that the rod, which connects the board to the base, is installed correctly. Let me show you. On my teeter design, the rod goes through one side of the base, then through the board, and finally out through the other side of the base. Second, you'll want to be sure that the rod is secure so that the vibration or impact of your dog on the equipment doesn't allow that rod to shimmy out of place. My teeter uses a threaded rod with the wing nut at the end, which secures the rod in place. Before each use, I visually check that the wing nut is securely fastened. The last piece of equipment is the dog walk. Just like the other contact obstacles, I start from the bottom with the stabilization and work my way up to that connection part and review for the same type of issues I've mentioned previously. The dog walk is a great time to mention that hinge pinch. What did I just say? Hinge pinch. I can say this correctly. Hinge 
pin. Yay! The dog walk is a great time to mention that hinge pin that I talked about earlier, and here's why. When it comes time to put contact equipment together, as an agility judge, missing hinge pins are the number one thing that I see missing. That's because they're small and they're so dang easy to lose. Second, I just lost one last week on my dog walk. These things are so tiny, which is why I have a stash of them. Oh, these would make such great stocking stuffers. Using my dog walk, let me show you why this hinge is so important. Just like the rod on the other pieces of contact equipment, this style rod connects the dog walk board to the base. Unlike my teeter, which has a threaded rod, my dog walk uses a hinge pin to hold it in place. This 50 cent part is so important to your dog's safety. So I'd like to know and comment below what you do to look out for your dog's safety when it comes to the agility equipment for dogs. Looking over each piece of contact equipment shouldn't take more than 10 seconds per piece of equipment. If you see something that makes you think, there's probably something that should be addressed. So if you're at class, let your trainer know. If you're at a trial, either let the ring crew know or the judge. If it's your own piece of equipment, definitely investigate that further. Now you know exactly what safety items to look for on the agility contact equipment. But what about when you want to be sure that every style of agility jump is set correctly for your dog? I've written a two-page guide on how to set each unique agility jump to keep your safety game spot on from start to finish line. Check out the link below. If you like this video, hit like below, be sure to share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.